All right, everybody, Terrence Pop here with another episode of Live from the Lair. And today, uh, I'm going to be covering a bunch of topics. Um, you know, basically, what I like to cover in these is either directly related to Pop's Preppers or questions in regards to other topics which probably don't warrant a whole show. And, uh, you know, I got a lot of fans out there that ask a lot of questions. So let me get this straight. I gotta spend two and a half years on books and tuition to take useless bullshit just to get at my core classes? <laughs> Space Ghost is on, you can suck my dick. You got any ungrateful relatives? <laughs> well, me too. So buy them something worthless. Get them this book. At the end of the day, they will thank you for getting them something that's priceless. Good advice. So click on the link in the description and learn for yourself why college is a complete waste of time and money. There's been all kinds of craziness going on in regards to the uncertainty of the U.S. Army and the continued use of the AR platform. Some of us refer to it as M16, the CAR-15, whatever. Um, the mechanics of the rifle are pretty straightforward. Um, the M16 uses a direct blowback and uh, there have been modifications <clears throat> to uh, add on a gas tappet system which is very similar to the AK-47 which in my opinion would be improvement um, because after you've uh, you know pounded out you know three or four magazines on the old M16 platform you get a lot of carbon built up in the bolt and the bolt carrier group so you know it could be a problem I myself when I was deployed with that weapon I kept it clean I kept it oiled uh, I made sure that uh, you know at a minimum I wiped it down at least twice a day and I never had a problem but yeah we're always trying to improve to the next uh, platform though in my opinion we've pretty much pushed the bullet the casing and smokeless powder about as far as it's going to go in regards to its effectiveness all that's left now is just arguing about the type of bullet aerodynamics of the round you know the casing you know at the end of the day it's something that explodes inside a chamber the pressure behind the projectile pushes it out and you know the basically the rifling base allows you to stabilize the bullet flight that that's it okay and <clears throat> like for instance the soviets had the 762 i think by 54r which they still use to this day. Um, it's a damn good round. It's been around since prior to World War One, and uh, you know, other than the fact that it's mass-produced, it's not really a sniper round. Though I'm sure you can hand-load it if you could find uh, casings and stuff, you know, to do it yourself. But it is what it is. Now. The problem they're having with the 30 caliber rounds ish is like the standard ball 30 caliber round is anywhere from 137 to 155 grains depending upon what country made it and so forth like the Swiss the Swiss there's 7.5 by 55 you know they use like a 168 uh, to 175 grain bullet Whereas the 556, the first generation, that's a 55 grain bullet. So you can carry three 556 five, rounds per one 30 caliber shell. So if you need to dump a lot of ammo in a short amount of time and you got to carry a lot of ammo with you, then yes, 
the lighter rounds are probably the way to go. Except, while in Iraq, um, I saw firsthand how the M16 platform with either the 55 grain or the 62 grain bullets just fell short. I saw a lot of guys um, that were up to no good take two or three hits and just keep going. Uh, if that were to happen with a 30 caliber platform, it would only take one, and that would be it. But, it's neither here nor there. Now, there's been a whole lot of uh, talk for the past 10 years about the 300 blackout, which they wanted to have something that was competitive with the AK-47 round, and then you could also have the subsonic for, you know, basically uh, special operations um you know a lot of people were like yeah this is the next round it's the next big thing i'm like yeah you know what i'm gonna hold off and i was right blackout not really seeing any traction for new weapon platforms for the united states military moving forward and then you had the 6.8 there's three different cases for it that were in the running uh, to the fact that Wolf actually started producing a 6.8 round in mass, you know, gambling on the fact that the United States military was going to pick that up, which they, they haven't as of yet. <clears throat> and then there was the 6.5 Creedmoor, which is a damn good uh, round. It'll perform just like a 308, has the kick a little bit, more than a 5.56. Five, the only problem is that bullet is so hot it wears out the rifling relatively quickly in your platforms. So, we really don't know where we are with that. You know, and again, the new contract came up for a new uh, pistol and it was awarded to SIG and everybody thought, yay, it's going to be a 45 caliber or 40. No, still a 9 millimeter. It's a good round, it's quick, it penetrates, and it's more than enough, you know, to take out hairless monkeys. That we are. So, you know, for the questions out there of what I think the next round is for the United States Army, I, I have no idea. They've been kicking around the caseless stuff since the mid-80s. In fact, I fired a few platforms that were caseless. I didn't really care for them. Uh, and, you know, the word on the street is with the, at least the old caseless ammo, if you were to really rock and roll with the platform, it heats up to the point where it starts to melt the case and then you have severe problems with malfunctions and so, so forth. And, and it's one thing to scrape carbon out of your weapon because that's just a natural byproduct. It's a whole other animal when you need to scrape off molten plastic or other polymers that are used in the caseless ammo. Um, that might be something that requires a complete teardown. It could be very time consuming. So moving forward, I don't, I don't really know if they're going to go with the caseless or not. Or All I know is the technology we have advanced you know, in our firearms is pretty much topped out and all it is is just arguing about you know who can save as much money what's effective and can it be cheaply made and you know sent out to the masses that's my, you know that is my opinion for the question in regards to that all right this is just you know um a quick search i did for the 6.5 ammo u.s army and they have the 6.5 Grendel, the 6. Point, I think 6.8, the Creedmoor, you know, I mean, it, it's insane. So I really don't know when they're going to, you know, shit or get off the pot. You know, in my professional opinion, it'd probably be better if they had, um, instead of one platform with one, you know, ammunition... Because let's face it, it's just it's not a one size fits all kind of thing. So we might see weapon systems moving forward that you can change out barrels for different types of ammunition, 
or we're going to maintain the 5.56, five, a 308, and something in between, either a 6.8 or 6.5. Who knows? All right, let's see what we got going on here. Da, da, da. All right, now I got another question from another guy in regards to the so-called FEMA camps. Well, here's a little article I found. Here are all the FEMA camps located inside the United States of America. All right. Here's the link right up here at the top. All right. Now, for those of you that are thinking, hey, it's good that we have FEMA camps just in case there's a big disaster and we need something like that. All right. I can... I can concede to the fact that yes, having something already pre-made and on standby just in case um, is necessary. So I'd agree with that to a point. But we have 50 states and there are 800 fucking camps here. A lot of them are former military installations. Just so you guys you know, put that out there. But look at this. All right. This is a lot of fucking camps. And to turn into a concentration camp, all you really got to do is put a barbed wire and gun towers, which a lot of them already have. All right. Oh. All right. So it's really not that much of a stretch to make the assumption that if we have a government that goes off the rails, it's really not that hard for them to convert, you know, 800 of these pre-existing FEMA camps into concentration camps. All right, now a lot of people out there are like, oh, that's uh, World War II terminology and it's not really needed and you're just a fear mongerer. Well, if you have a camp, and you need to round people up to concentrate them there for the safety of everyone or for their own safety, still a concentration camp. All right, so here's all the executive orders in this article that talks about the setup and the maintaining of said camps, the funding. Uh, some of the equipment that should be on standby at these camps. They even have a pay scale for temporary permanent employees. They have really, really gone down to the Nats ass when it comes to pre oh, to planning this shit out. Okay. All right. And, you know, some of them are blacked out on Google Earth. Go figure. But anyway, you know, for, to the one fan out there that wanted me to give my two cents on the FEMA camps, well, there you go. This is fucking insane. I never thought I would live to see a day where, you know, we were actually in fear of our own government. But looks like that day is will soon be upon us. Now, I'm just scrolling through here just so you can get a quick look of this article and everything that's contained within it. All right. This is, a, this is the real deal. It's coming down the pipe. All right. This is a quick one here. I am going to uh, sign out here, and I'm going to continue on in the next one. And... Uh, you guys send in anything you want me to cover. It could be, you know, on prepper. It could be on terrorism, war, civil war, you know, equipment, what have you, or just current events. I'll cover that as well. Yeah, because unfortunately, we're in a sad state of affairs where an old retired first sergeant grunt is the guy who can, uh, you know, give you his opinion and talk about things that are going out going on in the world in a truthful manner. Take it easy.